Let's take a look at using ordinate dimensions as annotations for a model-based definition. And if you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. I've got a sheet metal part open and I've got some predefined combination states. And normally I would start out with 7A, but I want to use those for the major dimensions of this part. For the ordinate dimensions, I want to annotate the locations of these louvers on the side. So I'm going to start off by creating a new combination state. Let's go to the annotate tab and I'm going to click new and we end up with a new tab down at the bottom of the screen. I can right click on it and choose rename and I'm going to call this MBD underscore seven. Seven is usually used for part dimensions and this is going to be seven B and it is now the active combination state. To create some ordinate dimensions, first I'm going to take a look at which combination, excuse me, which annotation plane I might want to use. And obviously I'm not going to use flat to screen. I take a look at front, no, I don't like that one. No, I'm not gonna use top. Let's see right. Yeah, right is the plane that I want to use. and It's got the right viewing direction. The text direction might be wrong, but let's start out using right and we can fix our annotations later on. So to create my ordinate dimensions, I will click on the ordinate driven dimension command in the ribbon and we get the select reference dialog box. And from the first drop down list, you can choose whether you're going to select an entity like an edge or select a surface or just select a reference. And surfaces tend to be more stable references than edges. So I am going to use that and I will pick the icon and then hover my mouse over the surface that I want to use as the reference, then click on it and move my mouse out over here. And where I want to place it, I'm going to click on the middle mouse button. And I can see that the orientation is incorrect and later on I'm going to have to move it to the correct plane, but I can continue on and fix that later on. Now I'm going to adjust what I'm using for selecting. And the first icon is for selecting the tangent to an arc or a circle, I want to grab the midpoint of these edges for the louvers. So I'm going to use this command. And again, in this particular case, I am going to select edges. And then I can pick this edge over here. This edge over here. And then this edge over here. And let's select the other louver edges. There we go. Yep, those are all of them and that's good. So I'm going to middle mouse click to finish creating them. And again, as I mentioned, the text orientation is incorrect. So let's select the baseline and then I can right mouse click and hold and choose change orientation. And it looks like it's upside down. So let's use the text rotation drop down list to change this to 180 degrees. And you'll notice that it flips both the baseline and all the other dimensions based off of it. So that's good. Let's click OK out of here. And also I can select the dimension, then hold down the right mouse button and choose move to plane because you can see that some of these witness lines are into the middle of the geometry and the baseline is created where I clicked on that surface. So by using move to plane and then picking this surface, it adjusts all the dimensions so that they are on top of the geometry. So that is good for those dimensions for the louvers. And let me see, do I want to continue using right? Yeah, let's continue using right for getting the sort of vertical dimensions on here. And let's choose ordinate driven dimension. And let's see, what do I want to use as the reference? I'm going to use this surface over here. So let's use the drop down list to change to select a surface. And I'm going to click on here and then drag out to middle mouse button. And then for the additional references, again, I'm going to use edges to get the bottom of the louvers. And this one over here. So there I've got my different dimensions selected. Let me middle mouse click to get out of there. And at this point I can select all the dimensions if I wanted to adjust them. 
So for example, if I wanted them to go out to three decimal places, I could do that. But if I'm happy with two places, let's change back there. I just want to show that you can select all the different dimensions and manipulate them together if you want, including turning on the display of tolerances. But what I want to do with these different dimensions, let's again select the baseline and right click and move to plane. And I'm going to move it to this plane. There we go, I have them nice and on top of the surface. So those are good for, no, I don't want to restart now. Don't bother me. Uh, those are good for that one. And now I want to create some ordinate dimensions, maybe for locating these different holes on this surface. And to make the model nice and clean, let me choose the orientation that I want to use for 7B. And I try to make it, you know, the recommendation is not to have your dimensions on overlapping geometry. Let's get a nice zoom, oops, nice zoom level in here. And then I can click the update button so that when I go back to 7B, maybe from another combination state, let me change the default all, go to 7B. Hey, it's using the orientation that I want. So for dimensioning the holes, let's start off by creating a new combination state and I can right click on it and choose rename and then MBD underscore seven and then C and it's my active combination state and just like before I'm going to click on the ordinate driven dimension and again I like to use oh wait let's select our orientation so for this one yep the top orientation or excuse me, top annotation plane looks like it will be good, so I will activate it. And now we can click the ordinate driven dimension, and like before, let's use a surface, and pick this surface, and then drag it out over here, and the orientation looks good. And now, for the different entities I want to dimension, again, I will pick a surface, and it's getting the center of it. Let's select this other surface. And by the way, I want to point out that I'm not holding down the control key. Let's select that surface. And this surface. And let's see, we have a couple more holes to select in here. And this one as well. So that looks good. Let's hit the middle mouse button to complete creation. And like before, I'm going to select my baseline, right mouse, click and hold, and choose move to plane and move it up to the top surface so that it looks good. All right, I'm gonna create one more combination state just to dimension a few other ones so I can show you how to insert jogs. Let's now create, oh wait, again, I want to choose a good orientation that I might want to use. Let's click the update button so that when I change back to 7C, it will change to this orientation of the model on the screen. So for the last combination state, let's click new. And there it is, it gets the default name, right click on it and rename, and I'm going to call it MBD7D. I'm generally following the mill standard 31,000 for model based definition. And for this one, let's see, let's take a look. I want to get the dimensions going off on this direction. Let's see, nope, not front. Top looks good. You know what? Let's create our own annotation plane to make sure that it's oriented the way that we want. So I can go to the annotation planes drop down and then choose the annotation plane manager. If you're in older versions of Creole Parametric, it's a little hidden. There's a little arrow over here on the side to bring up the annotation plane manager. It's not too obvious. And I'm going to create a new annotation plane. And if I'm doing it for a specific state, I like to call it the name of the combination state. And let's choose as a reference plane, I can pick this surface. And for the orientation, let's see, we want 90 degrees. Yep, 90 degrees looks good. Oh wait, need to flip the viewing direction so I can be looking into that surface. So I've got my annotation plane defined the way that I want. So let's click OK and then close, and here you can see it in the list. If you go to this drop-down list, you can see the other predefined ones, but since I created 70, it is the one that is active. And as before, let's start by creating our 
baseline by clicking on ordinate driven dimension. And for this one, again, I like to pick on a surface and then middle mouse click out. And again, it looks like my orientation is wrong, but I'll show you this again. I can change the orientation of this one and all the other ones will update. And I'll leave it in select surface and I'm going to move my mouse over here and I can tap the right mouse button for query select and then pick that surface. And let's then pick this surface over here and a couple more surfaces. Again, I can hover over here, tap, oops, missed it. Tap the right mouse button for query select and then pick this surface over here as well. And that's good. Let's click the OK button and let's change the orientation of this dimension. I select it and right click and choose change orientation and looks like you retained that 90 degrees. There we go, change it to zero degrees and everything looks good. And in this case over here, now I realize, you know what? I, maybe I shouldn't have uh, changed or selected that surface. Maybe it's more appropriate to have this dimensioned off of the bottom surface. So let's select this, right click, move to plane. And what I like about this is you realize you do something wrong. It's pretty easy to adjust how you have things. And I've got my different dimensions on here. But this one, the 3.88 and the 4.00, they are overlapping. So let's select this and right mouse click and hold and choose to insert a jog and I can click here and then maybe out over here and that way they're not overlapping on each other and the other way to get to that is if you let me deselect everything uh, if I select this I can right click on it as well and choose insert jog and then where I want the jog and then out over here and again helps make it nice and easily readable uh, one other thing that I want to show for these different dimensions, you can select one of your ordinate dimensions and then right mouse click and hold and choose toggle to linear if for some reason that you decide that you want to have a linear dimension instead and then adjust it out over here and as before change orientation and maybe I want it 180 degrees to look correct and then click OK and later on if I decide oh wait you know what that's dumb. Let's toggle this right back to being an ordinate dimension. And there we have it. All right, let's try selecting the eight dimension and hit the delete key. And now we can select this baseline and let's erase it. And probably the easiest thing to do now, create another ordinate dimension, select our baseline and then move out over here, query select and pick the surface. And there we have our eight dimension created. Hit the middle mouse button to complete and we have our ordinate dimensions. Thank you very much. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. I hope you enjoyed this video.